up, we have Julia Aller. Welcome, Julia. That's me. And I have a joke for you guys, just to get started. So, what did the yogi say to the criminal? <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. <laughs> All right, so I'm Julia Haller. I'm a yoga therapist at Prana Yoga Institute in Fort Wayne. And I am here to talk to you today about silence and how it relates to yoga and the mind. So we might think about yoga as physical postures that we get really sweaty doing, but it's actually the science of the mind. In fact, the whole goal of yoga is to quiet down all of the thoughts enough so we can tap into the silence or the stillness at our very center. So why do we want to quiet down our mind? There are a ton of benefits that happen when you're able to concentrate, when you're able to meditate. Um, so on the physical level, we can reduce high blood pressure. Um, on the mood level, we have less frequency of anxiety and depression, perhaps. Increased self-awareness, more focused mind. We're able to express our emotions healthy. And then we're able to have that deeper understanding and experience of inner stillness, peace, and silence that lives within us all. So, how do we do this with our mind? It's pretty crazy, it runs around a lot. The first step is to start to turn the mind inward. So getting rid of all the outside distractions, maybe putting our phones down every once in a while, we'll start to turn the mind inward. Then we're working to focus the mind, so giving it one object of focus. Today we're going to use our breath, because that's a tool we always have with us. It's not like, oh, I can't focus my mind today, I left my breath at home. No, no excuses, you always have your breath. And then, as a result of focusing our mind, we might arrive at that state of meditation. So it's just something good to note, is that a lot of times, there we go, when we're meditating, we're actually working on focusing the mind on the object. So the difference between concentration and meditation is concentration is the action of focusing the mind, meditation is the state achieved. So you might realize, like, oh, I'm working on focusing my breath. I'm trying to focus on my breath. Wait a second, I've just been focusing on my breath, and then you aren't doing it anymore. So it's kind of like one of those things when you're trying to fall asleep, it doesn't happen. Same with meditation. You can't will it to happen. You have to effort and bring your mind back to the object that you've been focusing on. So the best way to understand these concepts is to practice them. I'm going to lead us through a little concentration and meditation practice today. So if you would please sit up nice and tall, ground both of your feet, or if you're standing, just bring your feet underneath you. And let's bring our hands somewhere comfortable and check out your head. So when we're at computers, we tend to bring our heads forward. Let's try to get the head on top of the spine. Good. And close your eyes if you're comfortable, that we can start that process of drawing inward. If not, just turn your gaze down over the nose. And let's begin to check in with our physical body, bringing the attention up to the top of the head. And just draw the attention down the front of the body, noticing any sensations today. Down the arms, down your back all the way down to the hips and the pelvis, down the legs, all the way to your feet. Just making that connection to your physical body. Let's check in with the energy, noticing if it's higher today. Maybe you have had a few cups of coffee, thanks to Conjure. Maybe it's lower today, like you could go back to sleep. Or somewhere in the middle, just tuning into your energy. Let's start to notice the mind. What types of thoughts are present today? Are there thoughts about yesterday or the day before? Are there thoughts about later today or this weekend? Thoughts about what's happening right now? I'm starting to notice the mind and where it's at. 
you might be able to notice like-minded thoughts. You can start to organize them and then let them go. Notice what thoughts are easier to let go of, what thoughts are more challenging. Let's tune into the emotions, our subtle expression of the thoughts. Just notice what's showing up for you and if there's any physical sensation because of an emotion. We'll bring our attention to the breath. And let's just start to deepen it a little bit. Taking a deeper inhale, you can imagine it moving down to your low abdomen up to the ribs and chest. And as you exhale, take your breath out of the nose or out of the mouth. Make it long and smooth if you can. And let's take a few rounds go at your own pace. Take a deeper inhale, deep exhale. Starting to let the mind focus on the breath. Notice when it wanders away, when I interrupt you with my voice, notice that. And bring your attention back to your breath. Every time you bring your attention back, it's like doing a bicep curl for your mind. You're strengthening that muscle of concentration. And pretty soon you won't have to bring yourself back. You'll just be with your breath. And be quiet for about 30 seconds so you can practice. Let's bring the attention back to the inhale and the exhale, and then back to the room by opening your eyes. All right. Thank you so much for your attention and participation. Namaste. Mostly inebriated people. 
Um, and that's a safe space to be in. So I decided that uh, I would send a pitch today and uh, see where it went. Um, I don't know about science, honestly. Um, if we would have had a conversation about it before I uh, before I agreed to do it, all I would have said is that I think that the only thing I know about it is the opposite of what you're looking for. Um, so I was a little surprised that when um, I, I sent a pitch and I took about two seconds, which is what I normally take to make decisions about doing things like this. And you can probably tell. But I, 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 sent off, I sent off the first thing that came to my mind. And that was, silence is way too fucking loud for me. And I sent it, so I was committed. And I looked at it again, and I said, good luck with that, dude. Um, but that was it. I sent it off. Silence is way too loud. So I sat down to do a rough draft, which is what you guys are getting right now. Um, and it turned out that I actually I actually had maybe what I thought was gonna be enough to cram into five minutes of time, which is a, probably about two minutes long, which is awesome. <laughs> um, but, So much of my life, as I said, was spent being as loud as possible. Um, and so when I wrote this down, I, I had to think about what I actually thought about the word science. I actually hate the word science. I don't like anything about it. Um, when I thought about it objectively, silence is, it is prohibited. Si the word silence is aggressive. It is the action that keeps growth and creativity from happening. Um, and when I hear the word, I, I picture it, I picture places. And I see only a few of them that are all silence. I see, I see somebody with a holy pulpit, and they're shaking sh something shiny. Mm -hmm. And the other hand is over somebody's room. That's that's what I picture silence. I picture that in a creative way, and that's how you know that's how I get comfortable in the dark when you're drunk. Because I have I have a voice. I have something to say. Um, and I don't like silence because. That's the thing that happens when you sit too long. In silence, silence likes reflection because reflection leads to doubt. And if you're creative, and I'm assuming that most of you are, and they said if you are, so, um, but that's bad. You doubt. I mean, if you doubt, if you doubt your own talents, if you doubt your own perspective, your own voice, you're never gonna get. You're never gonna get anywhere. Um, that's been a big lesson for me over this last year is you know you have you have to get past that you have to get past um, I, was gonna, I, was, I had a lot I had a lot that I was gonna say about it but I feel like being quiet is better. And quiet is the difference is different than silence. And I like that. That's the space that I want to live in because silence, silence is, it prevents everything. You need to be loud. You need to be loud for yourself and you need to be loud for those around you. That's it. That's all I got to say about silence.
Um, I want you guys to humor me. A lot of you are sorry. <laughs> a lot of you still have your coffee cups down, but um, you need both hands for just a second. Um, do me a favor and just plug your ears. Okay, keep them plugged for a second. I wish you were up here to take a picture of us. This is super cute. Um, so I'm really excited that you guys are here today, and I hope that you're enjoying the program so far. You cannot plug. So, welcome to my world. Um, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm hearing impaired. Um, I've lost 60% of my hearing so far, and my audiologist says I'll probably eventually uh, go deaf. Um, and I think it really well, right? Um, so, I've been told that I should hide my hearing aids with my hair, my non-existent hair. Um, <laughs> I've been asked if I'm embarrassed to wear them. One, one person who asked me that had glasses on, and I was like. <laughs> um, I've also been told that they're not noticeable, and a few people have told me they didn't even realize that I was hearing impaired. Um, once I was even told that my hearing aids were kind of sexy, I was by my husband, so I'll take it. <laughs> um, when my hearing aids are out, and sometimes even when they're in, um, I can't hear my family, I can't hear my clients, I can't hear the barista or the baby teller, um, and I apologize. I am also a woman entrepreneur who mentors and coaches a community of over 500 women entrepreneurs in Northeast Indiana. So the society tells us that we are less than, that we don't have legitimate businesses, but rather we are glorified stay-at-home moms that we should be doing a better job of work-life balance. That we're too aggressive, too bossy, too bitchy, too loud, too sexy, too expensive, too cute, too thin, too fat, too ugly, uh, you name it, is a bottomless pit. And we apologize. But it's time to stop apologizing and own our uniqueness and own our voices. There are some serious perks to this hearing loss thing. I can't hear my husband snore. And I, I did have his permission to tell you that he snores. Um, or our dogs wrestling around the bedroom at night. I sleep like a baby. Um, it's also made me more keenly aware of my other senses, like how good dinner smells when I'm cooking for my family, and um, the feel of my puppy's heartbeat when he lays on me. Um, and faces, I'm most aware of faces and body language. I feel all the feelings of everyone around me uh, just based on their, their expressions and their body language. And when I need to close out the world, I can. Airports, coffee shops, or even just taking some downtime, I take my hearing aids out and I can breathe and I can focus and, and rest in that silence. I embrace it, I enjoy it. And then I put my hearing aids back in, and I experience the world again. The same perspectives hold true for women entrepreneurs. I submit to you that we are uniquely qualified to do the work that we've set out to do because of the fact that many of us, or most of us, self-identify with our businesses, like who are my entrepreneur sisters in the room, right? Like we are our business. Um, we approach our ideas, our clients, our projects with more heart and attention to detail. And we're the strong, silent ones. The ones who are, who are underestimated and then turn a little purse-making business that started in a garage into a $416 million brand. The ones who were abused, who have cancer, who were fired, divorced, immigrated, harassed, and told we were nothing rose from the ashes, and started businesses to support our families. All while taking care of the kids, the laundry, the cooking, the cleaning, the dishes, going to the gym, and rewarding ourselves at the end of the day with a, gla a glass of wine or three. We are freaking beasts. And this is just how I experience silence. But it weaves its way into each of our lives differently. And I want to pour into you to use your voice for good. I love that Olivia like said that exact thing when she was giving the intro. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna say that. Um, advocate for yourself. Live your very best life and do what you've always wanted to do. 
Don't let anyone make you feel doubt or shame about it. They're not living your story. And advocate for others who are experiencing silence and just need somebody to come alongside them. Using your voice and adding it to the other voices around you creates a bigger, broader picture and makes us better individuals and a better society. Your window to the world is unique and it's what you have to offer. Don't be silent. Next up, we have Rasaman Aladua. Please welcome her to the stage. right now. But between each beat is a silence. And I'm taking comfort in each part of those little spaces in between my heart. Because even though I'm really nervous, I can take comfort in the fact that I have little bits of silence that say, calm, it's okay. The other part of my silence is, I have depression. Every morning when I wake up, I say, today, it's not going to win. And some days it does. Every morning I say, depression, you are not going to kick my ass today. <laughs> and I have OCD. That means sometimes when the bank teller gives me money in the wrong order, I freak out. I have anxiety. Feel like all of these labels are coming out, right? I have a service dog. He's not here with me because I'm doing better. <laughs> um, but two days ago, I had an anxiety attack and I couldn't speak. My tongue was swelling up. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't think. My silence overwhelmed me. And I was helped by my service dog, but I thought, hmm, what if this hadn't happened or I didn't know about this? What if I just thought something was wrong with me? My silence encompasses every part of my life. So, I started Death Row Shadows with my father. I thought, how does my silence connect to other people's silence. Death Row Shadows focuses on how mass incarceration touches other people's lives, and we focus on the stories of those people, the stories that no one wants to hear, the stories that maybe you just haven't seen or heard, the stories of human beings with an E, because we are more than just the scientific breakdown of our atoms and our DNA. 
We are our souls. We are our spirit. We are our energy. We are our stories. We are our silence. So, we started Death Row Shadows, and Death Row Shadows had its first big event. <laughs> and it was successful because we focused on the stories and how those stories don't necessarily, they don't always get heard, but they don't have a script. It's okay that you have felon as your silence or your mark. It's okay that you didn't pay the speeding ticket and so you were locked up for two weeks. It's okay that you made a mistake because you're a human being. And as a human being, we all have silence and there's silent parts inside of us and that's okay. I look at everyone here and I heard the speakers, which was awesome, thank you. And I think, how do I compare? In my head, I'm thinking, how do I compare to the people who were already up here who did a wonderful job? Just like you said, silence leads to doubt. But sometimes, I gotta doubt myself so I can be better. I wanna be better person, a better human being, a better friend. So, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. Let's take it. Let's breathe. Let's take the silence. Let's hear it. From the shadows is where we give people the opportunity to shed their silence, embrace their stories, and speak out. Because in the end, we should all just listen to their silence. Thank you.